Wow. Do you have this effect? Love you. Everywhere you go? Well, the last time I was here, we didn't have these oh, yeah, beautiful people in the audience. I, that's right. It was all virtual. Yeah. I know. That's, it was TVs. That was I was hard. looking at TVs with Now Xboxes. we only have six TVs. We kept it a little bit because it's kind of cool. You can have people from all over the world. You know, oh, so. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see the heart signal. There you go. See, they, they're seeing us too. Are yeah. you moving to New York? We are moving I to New York. I love that. So we're very excited. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Love that. <laughs> That's some New York love, guys. Come on, guys. That's some New York love. I know, I love, I, and even, even so for my kids, like growing up here, there's a lot of culture. Growing yes. up in New York, there's a lot of, so either way, they get, uh, that's a win for them. You're gonna love New York. Yeah, every time I'm there, I okay. love it. Okay. You know why I walk around everywhere? Yes. No one walks here. No one walks here. Yeah, you sit in your car for four hours. It's such a good point. Yeah. I was telling my kids, I said, because we live in LA most of the time, and you realize that your kids haven't really developed their swag walk yet. <laughs> and the reason is, when you grow up in New York City, one of the first things you have to do as a little kid is learn your swag walk. <laughs> Gotta start working on mine. There's a swag walk. Okay. That's the thing you need when you're growing up in New York City. You have to swag walk to the train station you have to swag walk through the subway cars. What is your swag walk? Cause like, I feel like when you look like you, you just walk. Aww. Yeah, like, I feel like people like me, we need to work on something. But like, Aww. you just walk in and like, everyone's like, he cool, he's fine. Aww. Like, you know? Yeah, what is your walk? I wish I could see it as you as a young you. A young me? Yeah, a young you. Okay, I'll give you a young Give me one. young, you can do it, Thespian. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> pump it up, pump it up. <laughs> okay, this is, this is the real young me. This is when I didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> after I would do my breakdancing session, I would take off my hat and I'd go, yes, credit cards are accepted. <laughs> So wait, speaking In of- In fact, <laughs> since I'm only here for a second, <laughs> I'll tell you a little story that I haven't told anybody. Oh my God, what here? So, it was maybe 1983, 84 or something. There's a place in New York City called Washington Square Park. Anyone ever hear? Oh, I just stayed there for like, I, had a, I rented a house there. That's a crazy it's place. It's a crazy place. Like you walk out of your house and you're like. What's good? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. That can be a crazy place. So we used to break dance in. Yeah, the, I know that park well. And there was a, uh, a comedian named Charlie Barnett. And Charlie Barnett used to climb a tree and say, everybody, it's showtime. And he'd draw the biggest crowds. And when he wanted to go have Chinese food for lunch, he would let us entertain the crowd with breakdancing. And one day, he brought this little kid, this skinny little kid, and he said, this little skinny kid is gonna be a great comic someday. And we were jealous because they made so much money. And the way you, <laughs> the way you kind of assessed how much money you would make is the pile of coins that you had. And whenever the comedians did the shows, they'd have cash, and we only had coins, basically. And this young comedian, for the first time, this guy had introduced him to New York, was Dave Chappelle. Are you serious? That's how far that goes back. Wow, yeah. have you ever talked to him about that? I've never seen him again. Oh my gosh, this is the craziest story. What's good? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's bizarre. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only saying that now because I would, you know, I would, don't even think about the past as much as I'd like to, as we yeah. should all reflect more about the past, is because Kelly is doing such a marvelous job of taking me by asking me to do things like, what's your swag walk? <laughs> That's going to make me start that, thinking about that the good old That is some Diane Sawyer right there. That's some Diane Sawyer <laughs> We are going. 
Yo, he's good. <laughs> it, it's too much. It's too much. It's too <laughs> Move much. Move out of the way, people. This wasn't <laughs> the idea. I really, as I was driving over here, I was thinking, okay, you all know Fast is coming out. You know I make this movie with my heart. And I'm thinking, what do I need to know? And my daughter, who's 15, wants to sing. And I'm thinking, this is the perfect opportunity for me to ask Kelly what it's like to have a magic ability like her voice. And what advice could I give my 15-year-old daughter who has a dream of singing? Yeah. Dude, that's it. I mean, I think that Jesse and I would probably say the same thing. You just keep. Hustling, we, we just kept, I think people only know me from American Idol, but you don't know what I did before. And I think there's a lot of hustle in there. There are. That's real. Like people will say, oh, it must have been easy for you on the show, you have Grammys, you have all these things. I'm like, do you know how many people said no to me? Yes. You're too this, you're too that, oh you're not God. this, you need to be this. It's like left and right. And like really there is no, there's no, there's no other advice other than anything in life. Like just do you. And you know what I'm saying? And people will follow. Like, even you said, like, you've been a part of this franchise for so, this is the 10th one, right? 10th yeah. one. That's because you love it. It's apparent. It's organic. You have the chemistry of all the characters. The fact that you have such longevity with all the cast members and they keep coming back. They keep loving to be a part of it. Like, that's, that's rare. Like, a lot of people don't do that. So it's like, sometimes magic happens. But I think the thing that I always tell people on The Voice, too, like, artists, is like, quit trying to be another artist. Be whoever you are, because we already have that artist. So like, do what you do. And even if it doesn't like, you know, people have always said like, oh, well, if you, if you don't pick or you don't fit in this box, it's not gonna work out. I'm like, I literally love every genre of music. I work wherever I want, do whatever I want, whenever. And I think that's the key is it's doing what you love. Cause you only get one life. And I think we're reminded of that the older we get, you're gonna have to get her on here. Oh, well, she would love to. Yeah. Her. All right, all right. Well, I have to say this because I think this is very beautiful and poetic and magical. Um, I know that you and the late Paul Walker, y'all kind of had this thing that's saying that y'all, you wanted it to last 10, 10 you, you were like, how many can we get out of it, do you think, with this franchise? And, and the goal, I heard the goal was to get to 10. Is that true? Paul and I started, let me take you back. We were in Mexico before the first film had ever opened. We were sitting at an airport. Our duffel bags were at the side. We were sitting on the floor. We had just come from this place called MTV Spring Break thing that they had. Uh -huh. I've done that before. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? That's crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> and he said to me, Vin, take all this in as people are walking over our feet and not looking at us. And he said, take in the fact that we have anonymity. Because once this movie comes out, we will no longer have anonymity. Ah, uh, the, the pride in that. That's amazing. You believed in it. He believed in it. Mm. He believed in it, and he would always say, um, whenever we would go to a premiere around the world, um, whenever I would exit the theater, it would only be him and I. No other directors, writers, producers, studio, cast, nobody. It would just have to be him and I. And he'd always whisper in my ear and say, then the best one's still in the can. <laughs> and we were doing an interview in London, and they asked him, we had just done six, and they said, is there going to be another one? And he said, uh, then is there going to be anymore, is there gonna be a, a seven and eight and a nine? And I said, the question is, is it seven, I'm, I'm gonna confuse you, seven, eight, nine, it's, is it seven, eight, nine, 10? And when I said 10, he looked at me and said, if we ever got to 10, we would do something no one's ever done in cinematic history. And that 10 is coming. So it's incredible that like, I know he, is there in spirit and in heart, but he wasn't able to be there for this 10, but it's incredible to know that, you know, whatever you believe in, he's looking down going, damn, they did it. They made it to 10. That's incredible. It's Kelly, an incredible it's, it's, franchise. It's so, it's so 
crazy, and, and I'm so grateful. You know, this is a franchise that's never had an inherited fan, meaning there's never been a comic book, there's never been a TV show. Ground up. Ground up, and it's just from you all, and, and the love that you all have that yeah. has continued on this. And, and who, who knew that in, in 2023 that we would need a saga like this to remind us how important family is. Yeah. And how important it is to love each other, you know? Yeah. I, and I love too that you did it in two parts. It's so funny, because we've always known Fast and Furious, so it's, right. it's so amazing. Like, yeah, was yeah. that your idea? To split it up well, into two, like Fast and then Furious? It was, uh, it, maybe it was the studio idea, because it's really good. to wrap up the finale, there's so many characters, so many beloved characters. In and new franchise. ones coming in. And new ones coming in yeah. that you need more than just two hours. So their concept was, can you do, yeah. can you break it into two? Is this the part where you're talking about you're doing something that no one's done before? Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like that's, that's the part in the movie where you're like, they are not, they did, they're doing it. You're watching it and you're like, oh my God. We've done some crazy things. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, the cast, the cast of the Fast and Furious movies get more and more incredible. So let's go through some new people yeah. in this latest one, okay? Cause we're gonna start <laughs> with Dame Helen Mirren. <laughs> oh. Who, who would have thought? Oh. Like, who would have thought Dame Helen Mirren? Like, I just, it's incredible. She's I was, incredible. It's, I love her. She's incredible. Yeah. I love her, she, she came here and I fell in love with her all over again. So what was it like? Like talk about your first day meeting her. Oh, first day meeting her. I was at, a, at my agent's um, Oscar party and um, she had been doing interviews saying, they said, what do you want to do next? And she's saying, I want to be in Fast and Furious. And they're like, what? <laughs> and so she came up to me and she said, um, hey, Vin. Yeah, haven't you heard? I want to be in Fast and Furious. Oh my God, that's pretty good. <laughs> and I'm like, but <laughs> really, we're, um, we're about to film in a week. She said, I don't care, you're the producer, get it together. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so she's so bold, I, she was so meant bold. to be a like, part okay. of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> I love it. It was great, and she's amazing at oh, what she incredible. brings. She's so talented. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go to Brie Larson now. Is it true that her character is based on your daughter? Yes. <laughs> Which is so great. How proud is your daughter? That's so cool oh, too. God, yes. So um, how so? Well, she, my older daughter, she came to my older daughter's birthday and my younger daughter, Pauline, who I named after Paul. Yeah. Um, was wearing a good vibes only shirt. And she just has this kind of confidence. And so she modeled the character after, after Pauline, and it's just the most adorable thing. I love that. I love that y'all are attending birthday parties like off the, yeah. that's a family, that's nice. What about, I love Rita Moreno, she's been here. And I'll tell you what, that woman, I don't believe her age. Nope. I, do, I, don't, I don't believe it. I don't even care if you show me the birth certificate. It's a lie. No, that woman, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Literally, she seems 20 years I younger than she actually is. More. It's crazy. Were you, oh, were you a fan of West Side Story? Like, oh would you grow, okay, I didn't was know. Was I a fan of, yeah. I grew up there. Oh, duh, I didn't even think I'm about, thinking yeah. of, when I think of West Side Story, I'm thinking of those streets. Those, yeah. I'm like, that's just right around the corner. Yeah. How did that happen? How did she become a part of it? Um, we were getting uh, an award um, in New York, some icon award or something, and it was, uh, we were both recipients. And um, when I got up there, I just started talking about her. Because <laughs> uh, coming from New York City, in New York City, all over the world, but she's a huge hero. We, you know, we all love like Sidney Poitier, who got an Oscar in, I guess, 1967. But nobody really considers that five years before that, mm -hmm. Rita Moreno was the first Latin woman to receive an Oscar. And so she's a, she's a, a source of, 
so much pride. Yeah. And for all these kids in New York, yeah. she was a testament that you could do it. So she was an I'm idol to us. I'm just gonna write that off as because women make it look easy. What? Oh! <laughs> They're like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Listen. I'm, I'm a huge fan of hers too, just in general. She's just a firecracker, man. She's, she's a firecracker. Living life, she's like such a lesson in how you should live your life, just living. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna talk about this one. So Jason Mo Momoa, he's the bad guy, right? He is the bad guy. Okay, okay. He is the bad guy. What do you love? I love, I love him playing a bad guy. I think that's fun. Oh, he kills it. Yeah, he's got those evil eyebrows, you know? <laughs> he's got the, yeah. He, um, one of the things, one of the things that has served the franchise well is allowing people to really explore and to create characters that they've always wanted to create. Yeah. And he does that very thing. Oh. You see him relish in the idea of playing a villain and playing it with these unique nuances and characteristics. Yeah. And it's really fun to watch. Yeah, it's so fun because he plays like Aquaman and an evil person. Yeah, like, no, that's he kills awesome. it in there. And it's fun for actors probably too that y'all allow them that creativity and allow them to go out of like being pigeonholed. That's amazing. It's a beautiful. So speaking of that, I hear that you have like a dream casting uh, for the final film. Who who is that? Other than me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do you want to say it or you don't want to say it? <laughs> Are you Jewish? Ow. What do you mean? That happened to me one time. I was doing Riddick, right? And I had the eye, the contact eyes in. Has anyone seen Riddick? Okay. So I'm doing Riddick, and I had those contact, I couldn't see, right? So I'm walking through the set, and my head hit the spaceship. And I'm walking through the set, and now I'm bleeding in the, sh oh whatever. God. Oh my God, where are the- You don't want to hear all that. That's too much, right? <sighs> Too much? Uh, we love to talk about that. Oh, it's too much. I act like I'm on a talk show. Everybody, give it up for Vin Diesel. <laughs> we always love it when you come visit us. The first part of the finale of the Fast and Furious franchise is called Fast 10, everybody. It's in theaters everywhere starting May 19th.